Look at these three squadrons. Cleo, where are you at, buddy? This would be helpful to have a third here. Is Sniffy, did Sniffy teleport? Sniffy, you're on the other side. Oh, I have to, I'm gonna burn out to the other side. Are we canceling this? Hey, hey, Sniffy, don't take this. Just let it, just let it sit. Just let it sit. We might take it if all hell breaks loose. But they have bows and shit, so I don't know how we're gonna do this. I'm gonna have to use everything before I can even fight. All right, I'm waiting for you, Sniff. Let's see it. He missed his grab well for like fifth time. There it is. Where are you at now, big boy? Come on. We're on the hunt. I just used an oak flesh like I was in an arena. Oh, no. That's 100 gold down the drain. We better get these kills now. Oh, my goodness. Look at this big boy with the great sword. Look at this big boy. Absolutely smacked around. That's what I like to see, Big Sniff. Cut them trees down. Get our loot. Damn. Love to see it. Love to see it. Love to see that shit. Get right back in that queue. Look at that. They're, they're on their way back over. You see them, Sniff? We're accepting this next one. We don't want to beat them up too bad. Unless we can beat them up and then get accept. Look, they want a little bit more. They want a little bit more of the taste. Who wants it? This guy's coming for me. A little hatchet throwing. You know you aren't hitting that. Come on. Oh, they got more. They got more people. Sniffy, do it to him. Do it to him, big boy. I gotta help you, Sniff. I'm gonna help you, Sniff. The spikes. Oh my god, it's happening! This is not a drill! Oh my god, it's happening! Oh my god, bring more next time! Oh my Lanta! You doggy! Sniffy Joe, my man! Who's next? Bring five! This is a new game mode they must have introduced, Sniff. Two on five next, and we get two on six. We just keep going until we lose. I like it. My, look at here we go. Do we got one more this time? Bandit King, Mall Kills. Who else we got? Oh, look, they're throwing. They're already throwing shit. Yeah, maybe stand on this side of the hill, huh? Well, that was a good time. I'll tell you what. Let's see if we can get another one of those. That was a that was a good time. I like that one. Here's what we got three. Is that where's the fourth? You're telling me four didn't work and they're bringing three? Oh, the fourth guy's coming. He's just a little, a little frightened to get over here. But oh, they're spreading out. They're said we can't be grouping up. They've got calls. Oh my! Oh my! Sniffy, not like this, brother. Uh-oh. Oh, it canceled. Sniffy, no. I mean, this is not what you want to see. This one's taking a little bit longer, but, I mean, same outcome. Flame thrower starts, the sniffy comes in. Little table flip to end it. Table flip, table flip. Oh, sniff! No! Hey everyone, it's Graphic back with another video. And today, after tons and tons of requests, we're going to make sure we give you the Sniffy Joe build. So, we've seen him play a lot of Sword and Shield with the Greatsword, and a lot of you guys on the Twitch channel have seen his success in PvP. 
Well, this is a reason as to why. So Sword and Shield's gonna provide the tons and tons of utility with the stuns, with the leaping strike, with everything you have there. And then the Great Sword's going to just slash him up and take him out very, very quickly. So let's talk about the exact builds and weapon mastery wise that we are gonna go. So here, first off, we go to the Sword and Shield. We'll get to the attributes and stuff, by the way, here in just a minute. But I wanna start with the Sword and Shield because everybody typically knows the three abilities. So let's start off by getting some of the passives. First, the Empowered Stab. So successful heavy attacks grant you 30% in power for five seconds. We're gonna take the Achilles Heal as well. This is gonna be the final attack in your light attack chain. Inflicts a 20% slow for two seconds. If you are able to get that off, it's nice to have that slow as well. Sword and Shield critical strike chance increased by 10%. Who doesn't like damage? Going over to the counter attack. So basically when you block an attack, gain a stack of 3% in power for five seconds. Utilize this. Make sure you're blocking attacks. So next up, we have Leaping Strike, the first ability, and it's going to be on the Swordmaster side. The only ability on the Swordmaster side that we're going to take. Definitely huge to get the extra stuff that comes along with it. So on successful hit, inflict a 30% slow for three seconds. And then, of course, if a foe is below 30% health, deal 50% more damage. You're going to absolutely obliterate low health players. We actually take these two down here as well, Opportunist and confidence because they're always going to be slowed you're going to do 10 percent more damage to slowed foes at pretty much all points in time they're slowed and then we have the confidence so while health is full deal 15 percent more damage if you have a healer on your team this is something you definitely want to take if you're using pots correctly and getting to that full health before you use a good combo you're also going to want to take this we also have the critical precision so on critical gain 20 percent haste for five seconds movement speed is going to be vital for this build because you are going to need to be on top of your enemy at all times if you get kind of distance between you and a bow player you and a musket player you and a mage you're gonna have a struggle to get right back on top of them if you already used all of your cooldowns like your leaping strike is a very very long cooldown so we'll talk about that here in just a second you also want to take leadership this is going to apply more damage to all group members in your team which is huge it's going to definitely help out your team do more deal do more you know overall damage i should say and we also take shield rush so we're not going to take any of the extra stuff on shield rush so on successful hit all enemies within five meters are weakened by 10 percent we don't really care we also have the on successful hit all enemies within five meters of you are slowed by 30 percent for four seconds we also don't care we're not taking either of the shield rush options I'm not saying this is the best build, but it is a very strong one at the very least because I'm sure some of you guys like to take these options under the shield rush, and that's perfectly fine if you guys want to switch things up. But I want to show you why, like I said, this has so much success. We're going to take the elemental resistance because mages, let's be honest, counter melee typically. If you're running against two or three mages, the elemental resistance is going to help. Next up, we're going to take Shield Bash. Everyone knows Shield Bash, how strong it is. We're going to actually take the two perks underneath the Shield Bash as well as the final blow. So the third attack in your light attack chain deals 15% more damage. We're also going to have the Concussive Bash, which is going to increase the stun duration by one second. Very, very important to have as well. And of course, we're going to have the Invigorating Bulwark, which gained 15 stamina when hitting a target with a Shield Rush or Shield Bash. So imagine the amount of stamina you can actually get back by using this passive to your advantage. Also, all incoming health and regen is increased by 10%. Huge, huge, huge to take, as well as with a leeching build. Imagine how much health you're going to be getting back. So let's assign those 19 perks, and there's your three abilities that you're going to want to take. This is the first part of the Sword and Shield Greatsword build. So let's take a look at the next part. It's going to obviously be all about the great sword next, and there's reasons as to why people are doing so much damage. If you look at this onslaught tree, there's you're going to want to, like I said, continue to take advantage of the path of onslaught. So after using an ability in the onslaught tree, you're going to enter the onslaught stance for 10 seconds. Onslaught stance has the following properties. 15% outgoing damage, 15% damage taken, quick charge, so heavy, uh, heavy attacks actually charge twice as fast, but consume 10 man, uh, stamina each. So this is huge. Like I said, it's going to allow you to put out heavy attacks so much quicker than ever before. The damage taken is going to be increased, but you don't really care because you're here to do damage. You're here to make sure they die. So a massive, massive thing to take advantage of during these fights. First thing we're going to take is heavy blades. So charged heavy attacks have 15% armor penetration. We're going to also take the crosscut. Crosscut, if you don't know, locks you in a little bit of an animation, but at the same time, if you're able to hit the last third hit, you're going to do insane damage. I've seen upwards of 9 to 10k as that third hit comes down. So 
massive damage across the board. If you're able to hit all three, they're definitely dead, most likely. So let's take a look at the next one. You can actually gain grit when performing crosscut. We're going to want that. We're also going to want to take the base damage of final strike is increased by 100% if the target is below 50% health. That's when you're going to be able to see the massive, like I said, 9k damage outbursts on that final hit if they are below 50% health. So let's continue on. Take this right side. We're going to gain haste again. We always want haste. We have become energized by landing a critical hit and regain 5 stamina and 5% base health per second for five seconds. It's absolutely massive. Definitely taking that one. Now we have keen posture. After gaining onslaught stance, your next attack with five seconds, within five seconds, has 100% increased critical hit chance. So you're just getting so many buffs on what you would consider a strong, strong build already. And here we have Skyward Slash, by the way, if you don't know, in onslaught stance, applies one additional rend. So you're actually rending them with the Skyward Slash. So you may want to use this first if possible. And you're also going to stagger your target dealing 80% weapon damage and applying two stacks of 5% rend for 10 seconds. And like I said, an additional rend so you can get up to three stacks if you are in Onslaught Stance. Next up, we have the, of course, Relentless Rush. Relentless Rush is your mobility here. All of your mobility from the Great Sword is from pretty much, like I said, that Relentless Rush. So you dash through foes while spinning and apply 20% slows for four seconds on a hit. The onslaught stance, uh, or you enter onslaught stance when this ability ends. So you can also start just getting, you know, some distance here with the relentless rush, going into a skyward slash to apply the rend, and then you could start with the, you know, crosscut to finish them off. Obviously, crosscut's something you're going to want to do when they have low stamina, because if they have low stamina and they can't dodge out of it, you're basically going to one shot with this ability. It's just, it's just that strong. It really is. So let's take a look at some of these abilities down here or passives that we're grabbing. The 10% of power for 10 seconds after hitting a target with a Relentless Rush is huge, so make sure to hit somebody when you're making you know up that ground with the Relentless Rush. We also have the Adaptive Rush, so in Onslaught Stance, Relentless Rush applies Root to targets if it hits for one second. Relentless Rush, by the way, if in Defiant Stance, heals, so you can take advantage of that if you want, but right now we're taking mostly Onslaught. We have Relentless Refresh as well, reduces ability cooldown by 50% when you kill a foe. So if you're able to kill somebody with Relentless Rush, you're going to have that sucker up very, very quickly, which is good because we always struggle with cooldowns on this type of a build. Next up, we have Step and Strike. After dodging, gain 10% power for the next three hits within 10 seconds. We're going to take that as well as re, uh, Unrelenting Onslaught. This is going to help us a lot with Light Attacks doing 2% extra on the cooldowns and then Charged Heavy Attacks doing that extra 10% on cooldowns. So now let's go over to the Defiant Stance. What are we going to take? We have three abilities left. What should we take? Well, there is one ability I missed here on the Onslaught side. It's going to be the Aggressive Shift. After after you uh, you know use one Charged Heavy Attack, you enter the Onslaught Stance. I really like this as well, just because you're going to always have that opportunity to enter the Onslaught Stance very, very quickly. So next up, we go to this right side, and you can take whatever you want, but like I said, Perfect Vigilance is going to be very, very strong. If you are hit while at full health, reduce the damage taken by 20%, then gain a 20% fortify for three seconds. So right in the beginning of an arena or a big fight in an OPR, this is going to pop and it's going to help you a lot because remember with Onslaught Stance, you're going to typically take more damage. So this kind of negates that in a little bit of a way there. You get a 20% damage taken reduction and a 20% fortify for three seconds. Good luck doing damage to me for that first three seconds. Uh, we have the Blade Honing. So base damage is increased by 3% for each great sword buff on you. Max of four buffs. That's perfectly fine by me. We'll take that. Imagine all of these different damage buffs we're getting here. It's just crazy. So those are going to be the three abilities, obviously, Crosscut, Relentless Rush, and Skyward Slash. Now let's take a look at the attributes. So let me respec here. We may not be able to get exactly what we want because of the, per, uh, the gear I currently have on. Actually, it looks like it'll work out for us. So let me, let me show you guys exactly what we're going to want. We're going to need the 300 strength, always. Always take the 300 strength if you're going a strength setup. When we have like Sword and Shield and Great Sword, obviously both of those scale off the strength attribute much more than dexterity so we take a look at uh, actually great sword obviously scales about equally but the sword and shield definitely scales off strength higher than dexterity so basic attacks with a melee weapon gain grit that's the biggest reason as to why we need that 300 this is something that sniffy does but you don't have to do and like i said there's a lot of those options where you can do something or opt for something a little bit different but majority of this stuff is pretty base or pretty standard we have the dexterity he's going for that 50 dex because he loves the idea of getting that 10 percent chance to critical hit it's going to be very very helpful and it's going to apply a lot more in some of these fights if we also take a look at the constitution tree he likes to get to a potential 
155 con on his, but realistically, if you can get this to 160, which by the way, you can, if you go a perfect setup, you can get 300 strength, 50 dexterity, and uh, up to, I believe, like I said, 155 con, which I don't know if that's before or after buffs, to be honest, but if you can get up to 160 con and then use a con food buff to make sure you get to that 200 pip of minus 10% uh, to critical damage taken, definitely do so. Uh, but the biggest thing, like I said, is going to be, or sorry, 200 would be the, uh, let me let me get over there, plus 10% increase to physical and elemental armor would be the 200. But if you can get at least to that 150 to take that minus 10% critical damage taken with all of your resilience on your armor. Remember, resilient is so important as well. You're only as good as your build. You need to make sure that you are getting resilient on every piece of gear if you're looking to PvP. If you're looking to PvE, resilient is useless. Just remember that. So, like I said, 150 con is the next goal here. If you can get to 160 and then use the con food, definitely go for it. But this is going to be a very kind of good outlook on what you should be doing with your attributes. And you can always, if you're dying a lot, get rid of that 10% critical strike or critical hit chance and just stack that straight into con. This could be a better option for you because you are going to get that 10% increase to physical and elemental armor. Plus, you're going to have more health overall with this constitution being stacked here. So you can actually see on the right side here, let's go down to, let me let me show you guys what we're looking like here. So 50 decks, we have 126 con. Look at the max health on the right. You can see here we're at 9,654 of a buff. We take all this off, 9,654 extra to about 9,000, well, looks like we go up basically a little bit over 1K HP, which is pretty good. I mean, it's pretty good solid ordeal. Definitely when you take into consideration the buffs you're getting down here so like i said sniffy does take the 50 decks you can do whatever you want though it looks like a very very strong build across the board if you haven't seen it on the twitch stream we stream every single monday thursday and saturday at 6 p.m eastern and you've been seeing some great gameplay from sniffy with this build if you've been tuning in so i do want to say guys thank you again for tuning in make sure to like the video subscribe to the channel and turn notifications on uh, this is a build that I think a lot of you guys are going to enjoy, so definitely have fun with it. Continue to shine in those arenas, in those OPRs, and do some massive amounts of damage with those combos. Thank you guys again for tuning in, and remember, these combos are very, very long cooldowns. Look at that leaping strike. I hit nothing. 17 seconds. 17 seconds on that cooldown. Shield bash. 24 seconds. Shield rush. 19 seconds. Sword and shield has some of the highest cooldowns in the game. And there's a reason for it. It does so much damage. It has so much capability of screwing up. You're taking full advantage of these abilities when you use them. But thank you again for tuning in. And I'll see you guys all in the next one.